Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N Word is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay, let's talk about these new crackers. You know, there was a time when a white supremacist cracker really had to put in some work to get his point across. He had to yell. He had to do things, go against the grain of some people. You know, back when you had your guys like your David Dukes and your Don Imus types or your KKK sympathizers who were vocal, them dudes actually had to work to do that. You know what I'm saying? But like everything else, the white man has an easy road. Now they have it to the point where these people have non-white people to do their cracker work for them. And these people come from everywhere. They're American people, immigrants, people who are non-white, who are these new crackers. And we've been seeing it more and more in the past 20 years. These coconuts popping up, these new crackers doing the work for the white crackers who are just sitting back, kicking their feet up, giving these guys a little bit of money and sending these mutts out there to go ahead and spew their racial hate for them, okay? And they had to do this because they knew that they had to do some things different so that they can get their point across. They noticed that they kept getting sued. You know, the real white crackers at one point, they started getting sued. Their image is becoming tarnished. They're losing contracts, you know? Because for some reason, for some reason, white people in America, as much as they love it, they don't like being called a racist. As much as they like the outcome of racism, the benefits of it, they still don't like to be called a racist. And that's all. They, they get really mad. But these old crackers, they were more upfront and honest about how they felt about black people. You know, they were more upfront and honest about it. So they would get in trouble for it. Now, the other ones, the other fraction of, of, of white people, they felt the same way as far as the bottom line. They had the same bottom line, but they don't like the way this is presented. You know, you hurting black people's feelings. The other, you know, it's kind of like the whole conservative liberal thing, kind of like that. Now, don't get me wrong. These white crackers are still active and vocal, but. They have a lot of coconuts and I'm not a lot of non white people doing their work for them. The new hardcore crackers kicking that white supremacy all day long, you know, against people who look like them. That's what they do. Get these people a little bit of money, you know, and they say, you know what? Let's get this thing presented differently. We'll get some brown people. We'll get some immigrants. We'll get some non white people. We'll get some coconuts you know, to say these things that we really want to say. And then we can say that, well, we didn't say it. A black person said it because, of course, a person who's non-white or black is going to be able to get away with saying more things that would be white supremacist, you know, thought pattern type stuff, as opposed to the outrage if a white man said it. So they just hire these new coconuts, these new crackers. Then they say, OK, well, with getting somebody black to do it or somebody who's not white, then they'll also, you know, motivate some other people who are kind of inspired by the whole message. You know, some people who are detached from history, who actually don't want to accept responsibility for things that they do in their life and everything. So we can go ahead and get these coconuts and they could do the new cracker work for us. And they got a lot of people who are willing to raise their hand and say, OK. I'll do it. I'll do it. Now, here's something about these, these new shine bone, these new crackers that they hire. Many of these people are accomplished at something. Uh, sometimes they're highly educated. Some of them can speak well. Uh, some of them are uh, very convincing. They're very good at deception and sorcery and deflecting conversations and things like that. Some of them were great athletes. But all of these new crackers are definitely disgusting people with no dignity, no loyalty to themselves, their families, their people. 
and many of them are just Satanists as well, just like the old crackers who are still active but who have kicked their feet up, again, like I said, because they have these new cracker coconuts to do the job for them. Okay? Now, some of these people, these new crackers, they come from different categories. We're going we're gonna to talk about some of the categories of people that they are and what they come from. Now, one group of these new crackers that they like to hire. Well, first, we got to say some of these people come out the box like this. Some of these new crackers, they come out the box already pre-assembled like this. They don't need any training. They come out of their mom's womb like this as a coconut. OK. They take being a new cracker like a fish takes the water or like a dog takes the barking. Seamless. They can do that. There are some people like that. OK. Then there are other people who like to take this position or this job as a new cracker because they might have had a traumatic event in their lives. You know, and they don't want to be poor again. You know, they don't want to be poor again, so they figured I'm in a position to take this job as a coconut, speak against my people, spew this white, su white supremacist hate, create narratives that go against my people. These coconuts, they want to take the job a lot of times because they had traumatic events in their lives when they were young and they don't want to be poor again. They don't want to wear holy socks again. They don't want to get burnt by a radiator again. They don't want to wonder and be scared about who their dad is. You know, the image of their mom suffering and opening that oven for heat for them. It traumatizes them to this day. And these Negroes said, I will never go back to that. These coconuts said, I don't care what I have to do. I will never go back to being poor. I'll do anything. I'll even give up my hind parts. I'll give that white man my hind parts. As long as I don't got to go back to that. And yes, people. There are many guys who fall into this category. You know, there's no need to be to wonder. I wonder who would do that and who would do that. Would this guy do that? No. Like I said, I don't know if you listen to a lot of these guys who are like predators and stuff like that. Maybe in prison they did a lot of years. A lot of them say, no, I didn't have to do nothing. He willingly gave me them hind parts. And these are the guys that you see on TV who would do anything for money. They'll say anything. They'll create false narratives, usually against their people. Their people. They'll do anything for money. In this category, you see a lot of your athletes, retired athletes, or people who are involved in sports. Maybe they were not athletes like your Jason Whitlocks or your Stephen A. Smiths. They were not professional athletes. But then you have your other guys like your Marcellus Wileys, for example. Okay? Other athletes uh, who are willing to do this now. Now uh, you have your uh, Shannon Sharps willing to do this now. Anything but be poor and go back to grandmama's house. That type of stuff down in Savannah, Georgia, somewhere on a dirt road. They're like, never again. I'll do anything. OK, some of these guys who are athletes who take this position also, they messed the bag up when they were athletes, when they were getting plenty of money and Whitey knows this. So Whitey presents them with an offer. And Whitey knows that they messed the money up because Whitey was the one controlling their money and stealing their money from them as well. They know this, you know. So they call him back in there. Hey, you want a job? You got to do this, 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 and this. You got to say this. This is your talking point. You know, they call their buddy. Hey, buddy G G Jigabrowski. Yeah, I got uh, such and such. Yeah, he lost all his money. Got three kids. Wife hit him. White wife took all his money. Yeah, he needs a job. Yeah, let's get him down there. Hey, Feldenberg, get him down there. People, it's going to hurt a lot of you all to hear this. It's going to crush you all, but this is the truth. This is when we seen our gladiator, Mike Tyson. That's what happened to him, y'all. When you first seen Mike Tyson from Brownville, Brooklyn, the killer, aggressive in the ring, beat you down, you know, tough. That's when you seen him in that movie Hangover, shaking his hind parts with them white guys. Them Bernstein Bears got him because they knew Mike Tyson ain't have no money, man. They continue to do certain things to him. It, it, it rubs a lot of people the wrong way, but I've been paying attention and seeing some of the things that they did to him or that they do to him is because he ran out of money, man.
They stole his money. But anyway, that's what they do. And again, like I said, a lot of these guys were not always professional athletes. You have your, your Stephen A's and your Jason Whitlocks. They just want money. You know, they want to speak about sports. They love sports. They feel as though they can talk about sports and they put their whole spin of sports. You know, they include the white man's white supremacist talking points in the sports. And they always chalk it up as sports and say things like, well, come on, it's sports. You know, you have your guys like your Marcellus Wiley's, this coon right here, who tries to relate everything going on in the world through sports. One time this bootleg sat on there and said, there's no such thing as white privilege because there are black athletes who are privileged. You know, they say things like that to kind of deceive people and try to make it sound like they're sounding smart, but they're really sounding like an idiot. Given these white supremacist talking points, okay? Many of these guys, people would definitely surrender their hind parts, people, okay? And a lot of these coconuts or these new crackers, what they do is they sit on these platforms and they know how, how to say certain things to win the hearts back of their people temporarily. Then they go back and say five other white supremacists, disgusting thing, talking points that make the white people happy. Then they'll come up and they'll pop up. And people say, oh, well, yeah, he did say this that day. I'm glad he said, listen, throw these dudes in the trash, man. As long as they have a job on these platforms, they can do the whole little deception thing. They could play the, the seesaw Negro and the, the balance beam Negro and so I could say this, but then I got to come back and say this for these white people, okay? They'll always come back and they'll always disrespect their people five times more, okay? These are the new crackers. That's what they do. That's what they were hired for to sit up there, throw these people in the trash, and when black men come around who are like stand up individuals, stand up men, they get upset, they get jealous and they usually rebel against them by saying all kinds of terrible things. These are the type of guys, your Jason Whitlock's, your Stephen A. Smith's, um, your Marcellus Wiley's, your Shannon's uh, and many other. Co you know, a lot of them, y'all, you know, a lot of these coconuts, these new crackers that they hired to do these jobs. These are the guys who would have created platforms that speak against people like Muhammad Ali. They would have created platforms to speak against people like Malcolm X, Imam Lahaj, Malik Shabazz. These are the guys, but they can say that they wouldn't now and say that they like these guys, these men, because it's a popular thing to say, but that's not true. These guys represent the coons who were back in the day speaking out against people like Muhammad Ali and others, okay? Same thing, just in your era. You could tell by their actions. There's no fixing these guys, people, if we had our stuff together, if we had our stuff together as people, we would have to give these guys three months. We would have to say, listen, you got three months to stop doing all this stuff, quit that job. If you do it again, we putting you in this wood chipper. You're done. There's no group of people on earth who can progress while having these type of people coming in their locker room, getting all the intel and going out, giving it to their daddy. Okay. And people, you know many of them, you know many more. You're right in the ones that you, I'm just giving some examples. I'm just giving some. And then you have your other new crackers. Your other new crackers doing the work for these white supremacists who don't have to work no more, they're just kicking their feet up, are the ones who always had a disdain for black people their whole lives. They always had a disdain for black people, they, but they just couldn't move, in on, move on it because they are part black. They're not white. They're never going to be white. They're part black. Many biracials who have a white parent are these new crackers. They got a white mom, black dad. There's a lot of new crackers like that. Usually, you know, again, a white mom, a black dad. It could go the other way, too. These are your Andrew Tate types, your Malika Andrews. These type of coconut, these type of new crackers who say things, you know, and spew, spew white supremacist rhetoric. And they may say some other things that are right or good. But you got to understand a person who is standing firm in belief and about justice, they would never go back and say certain things that they say on their platforms with their celebrity being that they have more responsibility. They're not. They have to be more responsible. And if you check them out, their whiteness always comes out in a really deceptive way. They say things thinking that they can outsmart people because they usually could. You know, their personalities usually attract you know, groups of weirdos a lot who are just like them. And anything these people say, they'll give them a standing ovation. 
but they never crossed the line. These coconuts, these new crackers here in this category, group category right here, they're always smart enough to do things, but they can always run back into their white daddy's arms or their white mommy's arms if need be. They will not go against the white half of them ever. They will say horrible things about black people. They don't respect black people, but they'll never be white. Okay? Just watch what they say. Many of these biracial new crackers, you know, simply because they had a low key disdain for black people their entire lives. They all and they always wanted to be fully white. They always wanted to be white. They had white white relatives who they went around, they seen their white relatives and their white mothers benefiting from the religion of white supremacy and they just go look in the mirror and say, "Damn, I'll never be white." And their white relatives, white people are hard on you. White people are hard on other people. They're not like us, y'all. They don't have that good accepting heart like we do. And they always make these little biracial kids feel bad. And they always remind them, you're not like us. You still, although Molly is your mom, although Emily and Morgan is your mother, she's with us, but you ain't. And they hold resentment. They're really mad. Okay. They, they get upset about this. They seen the white privilege. They always wanted that completely. No. They were never accepted 100% by whitey. And they learn a lot from being in the house with parents. If they are in the house with the two parents, usually the white mother and the black father, usually now it's being the other way around more now. You know, it was going down, you know, the other way around. They're figuring out, they figure out that they were a result of a mistake or the result of a fetish and it crushes them. They realize that their black parent is usually some detached, weak, gumpish individual when he's around Whitey. And they can see that their mother really doesn't even like black people a lot of times. Or their black parent, whether it be their father, don't even like black people. I'm sorry, their white parent, if it's their father, doesn't even like black. The white parent, they, they, these these biracial new crackers, they found out some point in their lives where their black parent, their white parent, I'm sorry, didn't even like black people. And if you look, you can see a lot of their parents, the weaklings, like in these pictures here, their parents would typically be on the side of the picture, pushed to the side like they're the tallest one there, and they're not. They're not in the middle. They just push them to the side type stuff, you know. And it really pisses these, these new crackers off. It really, at some point, pissed them off. And this realization of what they are and their status and their parents' whole story, it makes them, it made them very angry in their youth and coming up. They have this low-key, boiling hate. Not towards the white people and the family members who won't accept them. Not towards the white people who won't accept them because they really want to be white and get some of that white privilege. Not towards them, but towards the part that they blame for not getting that acceptance. The black people. So that easy pickings to be hired to be a new cracker and, uh, and they're being hired and picked up and the whitey is letting them their platforms ride out as long as they continue to say the things that they say. OK, they're highly recruited. By these old crackers to be the new crackers. Then you have your immigrant crackers, your immigrant new crackers. These crackers in this category are terrible. Sometimes they're very dangerous. They can be violent. OK. A lot of them are very upset because they never blended in with the so-called cool black people when they were young. And they're still mad that the white people never accepted them. And these are the type of people that just can't let it go. A lot of the guys in that so-called thing called the manosphere, whatever, they're, they're these type of guys. 20, 30 years later, they're still mad because the black kids teased them for smelling like fish grease or because they had bobo sneakers on or they weren't accepted, you know, because black kids picked on them and jumped them when they were living in certain areas, you know. And not all of them were immigrants, too. So there are some, you know, little black kids who are like this as well, who turn out. You can see them on different platforms to turn out to be the new crackers. And you, you look at their history and a lot of them have the same story. They just can't let it go. And black people, as we all know, wherever you from, if you're a black person, whether you're a black American person, whatever, you from the hood, you live in the hood, your whole childhood could have been getting jumped 
and getting cracked on for having messed up clothes or looking corny or smelling like pee. People, that's how the youth is in the hood. And they act like they're singled out. You know what I mean? You're not singled out. That's just your whole, that's just the whole complex you have because you really want to be white. Black people in the hood got dealt with this, dealt with this with their own people, got jumped by their own people from elementary school all the way up, got cracked on, all that. It's, it could be harsh. It could be harsh until you, you know, get your stuff together. And that's just the way it is. And because of that, some of these immigrants who just can't let it go, they always have a low-key disdain for black people in America. And, and all of them are immigrants. Again, you see a lot of these weirdos on social media who are just regular black people as well. Can't let it go because they were corny. They're mad at these women. You know, they're mad because they got cracked on like everybody else. They got jumped like everybody else. But it crushes these people because as much as they want to, they realize I'll never be white. White people will never accept you. You'll never be white. You ain't white. Okay? These are the type of coconut type new crackers. They even hate the black people in the countries where they originate from. They hate those people as well. Okay? The ones who are standing ten toes down. You know? They hate those people. Look at this uh, a real good new cracker. There's a politician in California, in L.A. Um, to be exact. Her name is... Nuri Martinez, he was the president of the Los Angeles City Council. Racist immigrant Democrat, Mexican chick. Nuri Martinez, check her out. Mexican immigrant. She's running around talking about black kids look like monkeys and stuff like that. Perfect example. Or you got your guys from that podcast called Fret and Fish. Uh, uh, I mean, Fresh and Fit. There's two weirdos. Immigrants ain't white, but hate black Americans. Will never be white. Upset because how we made them feel in their youth because they're very corny. They were always corny. And now they have a, a following of weird cornballs who feel just like them. You know, your DJ academic types of immigrant weirdos who deep down inside do not like black Americans. Are all immigrant black people like this? Absolutely not. Are all black Americans who are buffoons like? Absolutely not. But they out there, y'all. They out there, y'all. Then you have this new, this Missouri a Republican lady, this Colombian chick named Valentina Gomez. You see, check her out. Google her if you want to. I don't even feel like talking about her, but she's a new white supremacist. She's a new cracker. If these people put as much energy into the issues that they have where their grandparents came from, as they do the cooning and hating black people, their countries will look like the new Dubai. You know what I mean? If they put the energy that they put into hating black people and focused on black people in America and cooning and hating, if they took some of that energy and put it into the countries where their grandparents came from, they would have a new Dubai. These people always jump at the first opportunity to be a new cracker. And they become very influential because they, when, when you, whenever you spit white supremacist talking points, you'll always have a lot of white people supporting you in comments. Here's a, here's a test. If you happen to be a black person, I don't care where you're from, black American, black Jamaican, black from Africa, from an island, wherever. If you are social media and you have a platform and you look in your comments and you have a lot of white people calling you big fella, you're right, guy. Man, why can't other people be like you? You're good, man. Just supporting you and telling you you're good. If you have a lot of white... You're a new crack. You're, you're, you're one of the crackers. You're a new cracker because white people are not supposed to be agreeing with you. Like they're supposed to call you a racist. They're supposed to say you're because if you're calling them out, you, if you're telling the truth, you don't even have to be going hardcore. As long as you just tell them the truth, white people are not going to like you. But if you have white people in your comments, when you bring up race relations and they're liking you and supporting you, you are a coconut. You are one of the new crackers. Yeah, just a regular person. You know what I mean? And then there's another category of new crackers that they like to hire and give a little bag of money. And these are your dumb bootlick gums, okay? These are your dumb bootlick. I mean, people that are so stupid. These are black people who are so stupid that they appear to be autistic at times, like Herschel Walker, them types. This is definitely 
one of the new crackers, a new coke. One of the new crack. White man could kick his feet up. I got Herschel, I got it. That's what they do. You know, guys like Herschel Walker, who are so dumb, you kind of like almost feel sorry. You're like, come on, man. He ought to, he ain't right, man. Or you got your big plantation Alabama gumps that will usually say anything like Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley is sit back and say stuff like a big old dumb gump, never looked into the history, never studied anything, but who will make white supremacist talking points 99% of the time because he didn't never look into history. He didn't study anything. That could be, you know, anybody, these guys. A lot of people from everywhere fall in these categories. They usually hire these guys to be a new cracker like your Herschel Walkers when they get very desperate. You've seen Herschel Walker get picked up by them, you know, when they got really desperate. That's how, the, how bad they were doing. You know, your Herschel Walkers, your Diamond and Silks, your Charles Barkleys, you know, just dumb, gump, ignorant, dingbat type Negroes, you know who got some kind of celebrity status from somewhere, but they always will have value to Whitey. A dumb Negro always has value to Whitey. You know, put them on camera. They don't care. A lot of these bootlicks are really slow. They have a lot of issues, but that's an opportunity for the old crackers to put them on as one of the new crackers to do their plantation work for them, hating their people. Then you have another group of people who these old crackers like to hire to be a new cracker. These are your well-spoken, sophisticated new crackers, your Candace Owens, your Corinne Jean Pierre's, your, your Larry Elder types, you know, doing Whitey's work for them. Whitey just goes and kicks his feet up. They could put these, you know, trying to be educated and smart sounding type Negroes out there to do their, you know, their cracker work for them, these coconuts. They'll say some things that make sense. But at the core, their bottom line will be promoting the religion of white supremacy. These, these are some dishonorable mutts right here. They're doing, a, they're doing the old crackers grunt work for them. Yeah, your Candace Owens, your Corinne Jean Pierre, the one who works for the Biden administration, the one they always send out. She happens to be an immigrant to start speaking. Yeah, or your Larry Elders. See, these people come from all kinds of different places, man. They come... These, these crackers, they come from all, you can, you can get them from, you can get them from another country, you can get them from born in America, grandparents could have been slaves, they will volunteer to do this new cracker work, okay, they tell the white man, kick your feet up, I got you, give me that bag of money, I'll do anything, and that's what we're dealing with, y'all, these new crackers, they don't need these old, old white men, to do it anymore. They just sit back and get these people a bag, tell them what to say, what narrative to stay on. And a lot of people listen to these people. Yeah. These new crackers. Anyway, people get in the comments. Easy.